everyone. Thanks for joining me for my June bullet journal setup. It's going to be a little different this month in a couple of ways. First, the design I'll be going for is a scrapbooky look using scraps of paper and different textures, tapes and stamps. I'm trying out my Archer and Olive stamps as well in this setup and will show you how to use acrylic stamps like this. They're so beautiful. The second thing is that my setup today will be fully focused on mindfulness. Most of you who watch my channel know that the main purpose of my bullet journal is mindfulness and mental wellness and a different kind of productivity. Not the kind where you micromanage your time to get as much done as possible, but instead the kind that comes from spending time reflecting on what's really important to you and finding ways to reserve energy for those things. Mindfulness journals help bring attention to what matters in life, and that's pretty much what my journal is. So this month, I'm just fully embracing it. I'll still use my journal to manage my tasks, but I haven't really been making much use of some of the standard bullet journal spreads lately, like monthly logs, so I won't be including that this month. Instead, I'll be focusing on more reflection prompts that help me move into a mindful state throughout the month. Things to raise awareness of what I'm feeling or thinking or experiencing. If you like to reflect or journal for mindfulness and mental wellness, then feel free to subscribe to my channel for more content on this. Anyway, as you can see, I played around quite a bit with some different materials to create a look that I'm happy with. Once I'd laid a foundation with some craft paper, ripped out of my Archer and Olive craft notepad, some loose pages from a book and some washi tapes, I pulled out my new acrylic stamps. There are so many lovely florals in the floral pack, I just wanted to use them all. And this part of the process really slows you down as well and you really get to enjoy it. To use these, you peel off your design of choice, grab an acrylic stamp block. I bought these on Amazon and I've linked my Amazon storefront in the description and these can be found there under bullet journal supplies. Press the block onto the flat part of the stamp and it will just stick. Then use an ink pad and dab it onto the stamp until it's covered in ink. Then stamp it onto the page. This actually feels a lot safer for me to do compared to the wooden block stamps because I usually make much more of a mess with those. To clean them, just grab a tissue or a baby wipe and dab off the ink. If you're interested in buying these stamps or the craft notepads from Archer and Olive or anything from Archer and Olive in fact, feel free to use my code RUKSHA10 or the link in the description box to get 10% off anything at Archer and Olive and it really helps me out too. They're really lovely stamps and I'm so happy I got these, I think I'll be using them a lot. Finally, I stuck down some white grid paper for where I'll be putting the June title for my cover page. I got another stamp set which was the Days of the Week in Cursive set and I used the stamp to stamp in June. And to finish off, I used some small flower stamps around the corners of the grid paper. Next I have my quote page where I'll be writing up one of the reminders from my 2021 setup. I planned to keep this really simple but then just kept adding things and couldn't stop myself. <laughs> the reminder I chose to write up is trust the process. I love this and it's something I often have to remind myself of. Trusting the process means slowing down, letting go of the need to control a situation or outcome and trusting that things will unfold in their own time and that following the process will get you where you need to be. It just helps to reduce your doubts sometimes and helps you keep going. I added a calendar stamp to the top of the quote just because I thought it was a cute stamp and then another flower and finished off with a border. Next I have a double page spread dedicated to looking back at the previous month. I used my grid spacing ruler to divide the page into half. I'm still loving how quickly I can divide up a page into halves, quarters or thirds with the ruler, rather than flipping back to a grid spacing cheat sheet. These rulers are up in my Etsy shop if you wanted one, along with all the other stencils that I'll use throughout the setup. I kept it pretty simple with some craft grid paper tape in the corners, layered with some ripped up paper from the book pages. This is always a really simple way to decorate a page, and you could leave it like that if you wanted to. I wanted to have some more fun with the stamps, so I added some small flowers to the other corners. The prompts I used last month are still working for me, so I'm going to go with those ones again. The first is Describe May. 
then what went well. Followed by what I learned and what could be better. Next, I've dedicated some pages to mindful writing prompts. So many of you enjoyed the Mindful March challenge that we had, where we did something every day to help move into a mindful state, and journal prompts were a big part of it. So feel free to use any of these if you want to join me with some mindful journaling this month. An easy way to decorate a page is with some decorative washi tape around the edges to create a border. The one I used is from Miso Paper. I decided to write up four prompts for the month and I'll aim to sit down once a week to answer each one. The first prompt is what did I notice? This could be what did I notice today or what did I notice this week? This question just encourages you to take notice of what's around you. The next question is what are my fears and worries right now? Followed by what am I feeling? And finally, what do I want to let go of? Mindful writing prompts can help raise your self-awareness, help you understand yourself, help take notice of what's around you, and release feelings so you can pay attention to things that you care about and be present and attentive with yourself and others. If you decide to set these up for the month too, feel free to tag me on Instagram so I can share your posts. Use and follow the hashtag ReflectWithRaksha to see spreads from the community as well. Next up, my simple things list. Five reminders of the simple pleasures I can enjoy this month. As always, I'm using my five simple things stencil to draw up the list. And then in line with the theme, I added some of my craft paper and craft paper washi tapes to the corner adding a few more layers with grid paper and anything else I could find. My simple things list for June is enjoy my first iced coffee of the year. I'm being optimistic and hoping for hotter days than we've had. Write a letter to someone special. Go for a long walk on a sunny day. Revisit a childhood TV show. Enjoy the soft warmth of sunlight on my skin. I'd love to hear some of the simple things that you plan to enjoy this month, so let me know in the comments section. It's always so nice hearing about your simple pleasures, whether it's something that gets you to embrace the season or something as simple as enjoying a quiet cup of tea in the morning. Next up, my monthly growth list, the things I'll do for fun and personal development. Usually I have a book that I'll read, an action I'll take and a class that I'll do on Skillshare. So a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like us to explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. There's a class for pretty much anything you could be interested in, whether it's creativity, mindfulness or productivity. Last month, the class I took was Designing the Life You Want, Four Exercises for Clarity and Motivation. In the class, you go through four exercises that get you really motivated and inspired. There are some really good prompts for reflection that you can do in your journals or in the worksheets that are provided. And they're really helpful if you're feeling like you're in a bit of a rut or you want some more clarity or direction. Things like writing up an anti-vision where you visualize what your life might look like in five years time if you are really unhappy. You write this list using different categories and it ends up being eye-opening and motivating all at once. I definitely recommend this class and taking the time to do the exercises now and revisiting them through the year or at times when you feel like you need to find a bit of direction. The class is done by Michelle who has the YouTube channel Much LB and her videos are always so inspiring and motivating and the class is just as inspiring. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity and take this class and it won't cost you anything during the trial. The platform is curated for learning so there aren't any ads and they're always launching new premium classes to do so you can follow wherever your creativity takes you. If you decide to continue after your trial it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Okay time for my final spreads, my setup for the first week of June. I'm starting the weekly setup with my motivational wheel exercise. I talked a lot about this in my last video if you want to check that one out. 
I went for a simple heading with craft paper and craft grid tape. Picked out another lovely floral stamp to add to the corner, then added the grid paper for my header. For the header, I'm just going to go with motivation and the dates for that week under it, since this spread is all about balancing the three motivation systems. Next, I'm using my motivation wheel stencil to draw up the spread. The limited edition blue motivation wheels are all sold out now. I can't believe how quickly they sold out. But I can now make motivation wheel stencils available again in my Etsy store in the galaxy silver colour that my other stencils come in. They'll be up on my Etsy store from today. So the three small circles at the top will represent threats, drive and soothing. And like in the video last week, I'll colour in each one based on how much I think I'm using the threat system, based on fears and pressurising deadlines, how much I'm using the drive system, and finally, how much I'm soothing myself at the moment with self-care and things that soothe me. The three segments below will be where I write in the potential threats in the week ahead, the activities I'm driven to accomplish, and the soothing activities I'll do to balance the threats and the drive. Finally, for this weekly setup, I'm not really needing daily task lists as much as usual, and I can just do some daily logs on a fresh page if I need to. So instead, on this side, I'm dividing the page up into four sections using my grid spacing ruler. The first section will be for listing my main big tasks that week that have to get done, heavily linked to the drive section of the motivation wheel. The next section will be a spot for my daily gratitude, followed by highlights. Writing up my gratitude list and highlights are soothing activities in and of themselves, so I think that will contribute a lot to my soothing activities. And finally, a spot where I can jot down any tasks for the following week that come to mind. Now for the final flip through. Hope you enjoyed this setup and I'll see you next Friday with another video.